Hey there, it's Erin from Little Self Learning, and today I wanted to talk with you about circle time. So you might call circle time, circle time, or you might call it morning meeting or calendar time, but basically this is the time when we can get our little ones together and go over some information, probably the same information we're gonna go over every day. You might have circle time in the morning, or you might have it multiple times during the day, or you might just have it later in the day. It's totally flexible. Every class is structured differently, but the activities and the ideas and the songs that I want to share with you can be incorporated into any of your circle time routines. So I have um, some printable packs that go along with these circle time activities. They are called learning binders, and those are located in my shop at littleslovelearning.com. I'm going to link it below. I have a different learning binder for each month of the year. So each month has a different theme, has different pictures, but the structure is the same so that it's consistent from month to month. So our little ones know what to expect and they get into that good routine. Plus all of the activities that are included each month are things that we want our little ones to practice over and over and over again. So it works out perfectly that they're just changed the theme a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to get a three ring binder for each of my little ones, if you don't want to get a full three ring binder, you can get those folders that have the prongs on the inside. That way, if you hole punch the papers, you can put them right inside there. Or if you put them in plastic sheet protectors, you can put them right inside there. But it just keeps them more organized and it keeps them together. I like the three ring binders because they have, especially the ones that have this plastic in the front, so you can slip a piece of paper in there. Because I like to put their cover on the front of their three ring binder. So this is the example for September. Like I said, there is a different one for every month. So I would take this cover and I would slip it right into the front of the binder. Now this cover is editable. So you can actually type your students' names on this line and print it out, or you can just have them write their name on that line if you want them to practice writing their name. And then I like to put it in the three ring binder and then all of their other papers inside. So let me show you some of the activity ideas and examples that would come with a learning binder that you can incorporate for circle time. So one of the things I like to do during my circle time is to incorporate a poem of the month. I love poetry. I love having little ones memorize poems, especially to help them develop their oral language and also to pick out those rhyming words. And I like them to be themed for the month because it makes it fun. So what I went ahead and did is I wrote a different poem for every month of the year. These are Miss Erin Originals. I have them printed out and then I've put sign language to these poems so that little ones can make it more multi-sensory. So instead of just memorizing it and just hearing the words and memorizing it, we put some signs to it to help make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna give you the example for September, but like I said, I have a different one for every month. I've also recorded videos of me teaching the poem to your little ones. So you can put that on. I can be your guest teacher for a little bit. I talk right to the kids and I show them how to do these signs. I explain them so that then they can practice all month and then they'll know them by the end of the month, which is really fun. So September's poem is apple picking and it goes like this. The weather's getting cooler. The leaves are turning brown. It's time to visit apple trees whose fruits are hanging down. Lots of apples to be picked, yellow, green, and red. After we fill our buckets, we head home to bed. Nice job, very good. So then I teach the little ones those signs that go along with the poem and we practice that every day. Then after poetry, I like to make sure my little ones are practicing their name, writing their name, spelling their name. It's so, so important for our pre-K and kindergarten little ones to master this skill. And so I have a sheet that goes along with the theme for the month that is editable. And so it has four boxes. The top box says spell it. So when you type in your little one's name up here, it's just like a solid font and they can practice spelling their name, singing their name. And then there's a trace it section so they can practice tracing it. And then I have a build it section. So if they have letter tiles, they could build their name here. And then I have a write it section with a dash line so they can practice writing it. If you have super little ones, I mean, they can write their name up here or if they're not quite ready for the dash line or sometimes, I mean, I like to have them write it twice 
whatever works for you. You could even leave these blank if you don't want them to have their name there to copy. If they're ready to just write it on their own, um, you could have those blank or they could do like their first name and last name. I mean, it's totally flexible, whatever you want. But I think name writing is so important. Of course, they, they write their name on all their papers, but to have a dedicated time where they're actually really focused on their handwriting and making sure that they're doing their best, I think is important. Before they write their names, I like uh, to sing a little song. It just goes like this. The first thing we do is always the same. We pick up our pencil and write our name. And so I like to say that before they pick up their pencil and then they practice writing their name. What you can do is put this in a plastic sheet protector. That way, if they're going to trace over it and write their name every day for the month, you don't have to reprint this out. You can just have them use the same one over and over and just erase the, the plastic sheet protector that it's inside. If your little one or your students are having trouble memorizing their name, I really recommend the name song. Her name, the YouTuber who sings this song is Patty Shukla. I am gonna link down below to her videos. So she has a name song and the tune can go with anybody's name to help them memorize it. So I won't sing it here so you can go check it out, but it's so, so great no matter the length, even if they have a short name or a super long name, this tune works for everyone's name and it really helps them to memorize how to spell it. So I will link that below so you can see because we know as preschool, pre-K and kindergarten teachers that name writing and name spelling is so, so important. Another thing I think is really important to include in circle time or morning meeting is a feelings check-in. So I think it's really important that we teach our little ones to check in with themselves during the day about how they're feeling, whether it's a positive emotion or a negative emotion. We want them to know that all feelings are okay and we want to give them the tools to work through those negative emotions, those negative feelings, so that they don't feel alone in them. We want them to know it's okay to have those feelings, but we also want to help them work through it. So in the learning binder packs, I do include feeling cards. I choose four per month and I choose two more positive emotions and two more negative emotions just to give them a little bit of a chance to, to have both. It doesn't always have to be positive. And they're themed for the month, of course, with these cute little clip art cards. Um, but for September, there is unhappy, bugged, excited, and glad. So I would have my little ones check in and see which feeling they were feeling. And of course, our little ones have so many feelings. And so these are only four, but just kind of which one maybe they identify with, if they can identify with one. And then I like to have them keep track on a tally chart. So I would have them mark off which feeling they felt that day. And then at the end of the month, count up the totals and see which feeling they had the most of and which feeling they had the least of. So we're sneaking in some math practice in there too. Of course, I have a song to go along with feelings because I like to use a lot of songs during circle time. This song I got from Dr. Jean, and so I sing it like this. How are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? It'll be just fine, you're a friend of mine. How are you feeling today? So we always sing that before we check in with our feelings, which is just kind of a fun way to let them know that it's time to share their feelings. The next part of circle time that I wanna talk about is calendar time. But before we get started, I just wanted to point out that for our littlest ones, our twos and threes and our young fours, a linear calendar is probably gonna be the best option for you for calendar time so that you are counting the days of the month in order in a number line. So they can see how the days start at one and go all the way to 30 or 31. That is a little bit more appropriate for our youngest ones but the calendar I'm gonna show you today is more traditional, so it would be better for your older pre-K or transitional kindergarten students or your regular kindergarten students. Um, but calendar time is super fun. There's a lot of songs that we like to sing and incorporate. And I think it's really great when kids can have their own calendar in their hand and not just look at the big, big calendar that's on the board so that they can make that connection to the calendar. So in every learning binder pack, there is a calendar with like cute little clip art there. It is totally editable. So the year is editable and all of these numbers are editable as well. I made the numbers traceable. So you could type in the numbers and then they could trace them every day or you can leave this blank. And if they're older, you can have them fill in the numbers as they're following along on the calendar. That would be a great option as well. I made sure to include enough boxes <laughs> so that even if the first is a Saturday, 
and the 31st is a Tuesday, you would have enough boxes where you wouldn't have to do any of those boxes that share, you know, the diagonal slashes on calendars where we don't have enough weeks, so they slash them. I just think that's so confusing for kids. <laughs> They're like, wait, that's his 24 and that's his 30, but which one goes with this week? I just think it's a little bit too confusing. So I just made sure to to spread it out so that none of the days have to have diagonal slashes no matter when they start. So there's plenty of space for all the days. I also included a box down here that says today is. Depending on your students' levels, you might have them write the number of the day, you might have them write the day of the week, or maybe you're gonna have them write the entire date. Totally up to you, but that's down here as well. Let me just run through a few quick songs that I sing during calendar time so you can get an idea of how this goes for us. So the first thing we would do is watch the Jack Hartman video for the month that we're in. So Jack Hartman has a great YouTube channel. I will link it below. He has a different video for each month of the year. So for example, September, we would find the September video and then we would watch that. He always has a great song. He spells out the month, which is really great. And then he talks about any important holidays or events that are in that month. He incorporates that into the song. So we like to watch that. Then we do months of the year. And of course we do the Macarena, just like lots of early childhood educators do with the months of the year song. So if you haven't heard it, I'm sure you have, but it's really quick. It goes like this, January, February, March, April, May. June, July, August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. You could also say 12 months in a year if you want them to know there are 12 months. So that's a really fun song. What I like to do is to make sure that whatever month we're in, my little ones are doing something different when we get to that month. So for example, for September, I might have them jump up when we say September or spin around in a circle or even crouch down, but do something different so that they're having to listen for that month. And then when it happens, we do something different. So then we like to sing a Days of the Week song. There are lots of options for that. There's the Adam Family Days of the Week song. There are lots. But one of the things I really like to do during Days of the Week is um, sign language. So I like to teach my little ones the sign for each day and we can practice those. So if we were singing a Days of the Week song, uh, I'll just give one example and I'll show you the signs that I would do uh, with that song. So you might say, there are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I would teach them the sign for each day of the week and then we would incorporate it into our songs. I really like sign language because it just gives them something to do, makes it more multi-sensory so they're not just sitting there listening the whole time. Another song that we like to sing, when I have the calendar up and let's say we've discovered that today was the 15th, we would start at number 15 and then we would sing this song. Up, up, up we go to see what day it is. Today is Wednesday, September 15th. That's what day it is. So I'm trying to get them to say the whole entire date with that song. We can talk about what day it was before, what day is coming after, point out special holidays and events on the calendar. And then I also like this Today Is song. I sing a song when we talk about what today is. So I would sing it with sign language. Today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, September 15th, if it was September 15th. So those are just a few songs that I like to sing during calendar to try to make it a little bit more interactive so they're not just sitting there listening the whole time. So after we talk about what today is, we of course want to know what the weather is for today. I have a song for that too. We say, What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? And then I have weather cards that go for each month. Is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it windy? Or is it rainy? So I only have four choices for each month. I know the weather can be lots of different things and I'm not sure what the weather is like where you live, but I just picked four different ones for each month and then I included a bar graph so that your little ones can track the weather using this bar graph. 
And I know sometimes my little ones get mad at me if let's say it's snowing and we don't have snowy as an option. So we just do our best because I can't include all the weather for every month but I do like for them to keep track of it on this bar graph. Again, sneaking in some more math practice. In the Learning Binder printables, I also have these thematic reading logs, which are really fun. And so for every month, there is a different little picture that they're gonna color in. And I like these for the read alouds that we do as a class. So after I read a book out loud, they can color in the apple for the day. These are also really fun to send home. You can make copies and send them home so that when little ones read at home with their families, they could color one in. Um, but I just like that they're thematic and that it gives them a little bit of motivation once they're done reading or listening to the story that they get to color it in. So those are the six areas that I incorporate in my circle time every day. It doesn't all have to be at once. It can be broken up throughout the day, but I think doing those six things every day over time makes the biggest difference. That consistency is key. So again, those six areas were the poem of the month, name writing practice, checking in with their feelings, calendar, weather, and a read aloud. I like to do those same six things every day. And from month to month in the learning binders, those stay pretty consistent. So the thematic part changes, and of course the poem changes, but other than that, it's gonna be pretty consistent. But then what I've also included in the learning binders are four printables that are different every month. And these are just print and go printables. So I make a lot of resources for preschool, pre-K and kindergarten teachers. And those resources are very much, they need to be prepped. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces that you wanna cut out. Maybe you wanna laminate them because kids are gonna be moving and manipulating and using Play-Doh with them and just all sorts of hands-on multi-sensory learning fun. I absolutely love that. I think that's the best way that kids learn. But I also know that sometimes we just need a really quick print and go page for our kids. It doesn't take a lot of prep, especially if we wanna send it home to our parents to have our parents practice with the little ones at home. Or maybe we wanna use it for morning work when they first come in and things are a little chaotic, we're trying to get everyone settled. Or maybe even for fast finishers, finishers who are done really fast and they're ready for the next thing and you want to have something for them to do, but maybe something that doesn't require a lot of prep. So in each learning binder, I have four no prep printables. You just print and go, two literacy and two math. So those will change from month to month. Those are going to go along with the theme for the month, but they're going to be different skills that they're practicing. So I hope these ideas are helpful for you for your circle time or your calendar time or your morning meeting. I think my biggest piece of advice when you're doing these activities with your little ones is to incorporate a lot of movement, a lot of songs, and I think sign language is the way to go because it really helps them stay on track, stay on tasks. It helps them memorize things more quickly and it also builds great connections in their brains. And that of course is what we want. So if you're interested in learning more about the printables that I use during my circle time called my learning binder printables, you can head to littleslovelearning.com. I will have the direct link below for these listings so you can check them out. Like I said, I have one for each month of the year, including the summer. So if you are teaching summer school, I've got you covered. If you have any questions about any of these activities, any of the songs that I sang or the sign language, please reach out to me. I would love to hear from you and I would love to help support you and your little ones on their journey, getting ready from preschool to go to kindergarten. Happy learning.